Scott Weaver with Factory Direct Designers Workroom. So I wanted to give you a very close-up view of how to pleat the swag and hopefully you can watch what I'm doing with my hands. Um, I think this is close enough for you. Um, so anyway, let's begin. So here is my swag pattern. Um, this is a half a swag pattern. I folded my fabric in half and then I laid the half of the swag pattern on. And I did that because then I can adjust the width of it the way I want to, um, and etc. So anyhow, I'm going to remove this, and here is my fabric, and we're beginning to begin taking our pleating board, opening up our swag. putting it up to the edge top edge of my pleating board. Now this is just an unlined swag and the purpose of this video is just to show you again how to pleat the swag. Because I get a lot of emails, a lot of people saying, I just having a hard time doing it, can you show me? You know, because a lot of times my bald head's in the way, I get comments, oh your head's in the way, I can't see your hands and <laughs> the, the lighting is throwing it off, so I'm, I'm trying. So anyhow, this is the V right in here, and it's the inner V right in these corners right here that we are going to use to form the swag. So we're going to pinch it. We're going to bring it up to the top, and you're going to watch this part of it right here, that this gets folded in half and lines up even with the board. And this one also comes over and it's all even at the top of the board. Just like that. Take a push pin, hold it in, and you only want one pin here, and this is unfortunately just gonna have to leave it the way it is until the next pleats to come. Working left to right is the way I like to do it. I'm going to grab that second V right here, and I'm also going to take my hand in the center and pinch some of that fabric. Again, I'm bringing it up, and you can see I kind of put my fingers right here to hold it. Bringing it up once again, you'll see I'm trying to make this go folded right in half. Then I'm bringing this up so it's all even to the top of my board. Sticking another push pin, and you can see on this side it. It's already kind of flapped over. That's all right, we can fix it. My fabric is all on the table. I don't have anything falling off the table. I'm gonna come into the center here and I'm gonna form my next pleat kind of like that. With this hand, I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna come back to that V right here. I'm grabbing it. I'm just giving it a little pull. See, I just pulled that like that. That's forming my pleat, bringing it up. Again, I want to make sure that all this is on the very top edge of my board, and you can see how that's folded. So each one of these are folded in half, folded in half, and this comes over. So we're creating a straight edge. Place another pin, back over to this V here, grabbing my material to the center, and then grabbing my V giving a little bit of a pull, 
putting my hand here to hold the others. It's a little tricky. Not gonna lie to you. Take your time. Bringing them all up so they're all even to the top of the board. Just like that. Another push pin. This is a 20 inch deep swag. So it has six pleats to it. Okay, grabbing the point again. If this was an 18 inch swag, it would have five pleats. If it was less, like a 12 inch, it would only have maybe four pleats to it. Anyhow, there it is to keeping it all even. The importance of these boards. Your extra pair of hands. Matter of fact, it's like 16 hands with all these pleats. Very important to use one. Back to the same V here. Pulling my fabric, holding the center here. Bringing it up. And remember, practice makes perfect. I have it a little easier because if you're, I make my own patterns. My patterns are easier to pleat. I, I've seen the paper ones. They're not so easy. These pleats are spread out a little farther. They're a little deeper. They're easier to grab a hold of. Get much better success. Uh, honestly, I think the paper ones you buy in stores are junk. Just my opinion. What do you want for, you know, something costing you five or six dollars? Get what you pay for. So here's the next one, bringing it up. Grabbing my V, either left to right or right to left, doesn't really matter as long as you go from one side to the other side. What you don't want to do is pleat one side then go to the other side and try pleating the other side. Um, that will not work for you. You have to go from one side to the other side. My last pleat. You can see how I'm pulling that here, helping it. Okay, there it is. Now normally what I do, which I've shown you in previous um, videos, well first I would do is I'd measure this with, measure this with, making sure they're the same, if, because if they're not the same, if this one's a lot closer than this one is, your swag is actually going to be offset. It's going to curve. So you want to make sure you're checking the distance between the first pleat and where it ends here, going and double checking it here. You also want to look to make sure that, um, which I can tell you right now, looking at the swag, I did it quickly, well quickly for me, but anyhow, I can see that this spacing is a little bit too wide. So normally what I would do is I'd come back over here and say, oh, that's, this one's much wider and they come a little closer, 
So that's at that point when you're looking at your stepping back, you can make that little adjustment here to try to keep your spacings all the same. Then at this point, if I was going to sew across the top, I'd take my stapler, a little plier stapler, I'd slowly remove these pins, I would staple it down, bring it over to the sewing machine, sew it down around a quarter inch, and then I have something that I usually call a tagging strip that I put on it. You can find all these instructions on how to do it on my website, Factory Direct Designers Workroom. And I believe that's, that's it. Um, now, another thing that people have asked me, can I adjust the width of the swag now even though it's pleated yeah you can and I'll, and I'll show you a little bit let's say I want to make this narrower let's say I want to make it really narrower let's do it I'm just going to do it quickly just to show you how you can adjust it you can bring each one of these pleats up and you want to do the same on each side I'm not making it even, I just I don't want to waste your time showing you. But you can see how much I brought this up. And you can do the same thing on the other side of it. Then you'd want to measure from here to here and from here to here. Make sure it's all the same. Now, I'm not recommending doing this, but I just want to show you that you can fudge these swags if you need to by bringing them over the top like that. And then what you're going to do is cut it off. Take your scissors. Oh, here's a pair of scissors. And then you can trim this straight again. I'm just showing you this, like I say, I'm not saying I recommend it, but people have asked me before, can you adjust the swag? It, I pleated it, it didn't come out the width I wanted, it came out way too wide. Voila. All cut off, you'd never know the difference. And there's your swag. Anyhow, that's how to pleat a swag once again. Have good, have some great luck doing this. And take your time with it. Don't drink too much coffee. Don't be in a rush. Don't be doing this right before you go to work. Um, making sure you're just uh, a lazy day, relaxing, trying to plead a sweat. Otherwise, it'll never come out correctly. So, biggest tip don't rush it. Thanks for watching.